All right, well, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for coming today. <laughs> um, uh, this is the uh, second of our panels, uh, like the one we did last night. This one uh, is going to focus on uh, the other elements of the world of darkness, uh, most notably uh, werewolf uh, and mage. Uh, this is a retrospective panel, uh, mostly covering the history of the franchise, so we, uh, we're going to basically talk a lot about that and, um, and then at some point turn it over to the audience to, to ask questions. This is your, your chance if you've ever wanted to kind of pick the brains of the guys that, uh, that created this stuff and uh, say, why did you, you guys do that? And then this is your, uh, your opportunity to do that. Thanks. So um, I'll introduce everybody. Uh, starting uh, on my far right uh, is the uh, Mage Mindset Theater developer, Eddie Webb. Hello. Uh, uh, Ethan Skem. Uh, who's done a million things, but mostly for well. Um, Man of many talents. Uh, Bill Bridges, uh, best known for wealth and mage, and then Jess Heineck, who uh, a former mage developer. Um, I guess I'll start the first question by basically saying, uh, you know, vampire kind of tends to get kind of a, a top billing, but there's uh, werewolf and mage definitely rounded out the the world of darkness experience, and there was very very different. Those two games seemed in some ways more similar and almost more of a pair than, than Vampire kind of stood off on its own. What, uh, you know, what was your kind of best or most notable experience that you'd say is uh, working with either of those franchises? Jeez. <laughs> Someone else start. <laughs> but you're the expert on that, Bill, <laughs> since you've done both Werewolf and Mage. That's true. And uh, um, what'd you like the best? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Which of your children do you like better? <laughs> Sophie's choice. Well, uh, that's easy, werewolf. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mages. And the battle walks out. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, gosh, jeez, I don't know. I mean, there was all sorts of fun stuff about werewolf, sorts of fun stuff about mage, too, and aggravating things about both also, you know? You know, deadline uh, pressure for everything. So uh, sometimes you don't get to do what you want, and sometimes because of the deadline pressure, you get to put something in. When someone says, "I don't like that," oh, too late to change it. <laughs> 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 so, I've never yeah. done that. <laughs> good I, stuff. I, think he tries to look at his <laughs> I, I absolutely investigating it last minute. No way. I mean, some of that was in original Mage too, when uh, we all scrambled to finish that book. Uh, everybody in the office. And yeah, there were, there were some tempers flared, so we got to slip in a few little you know puns and stuff against certain people. I won't mention them right now, but you know, <laughs> the deadline pressures allow us to do that sort of stuff now and then. Uh, okay. One of the nicest contrasts. Can you hear me? Is, yes. All right. Uh, one of the nice contrasts about Werewolf and Mage, though, was that they really opened up to anyone to find something that they sympathize with, that they identify with overall, if you're more of a country boy than a city person at heart, immediately Werewolf says, here's another portion of it. Um, we would eventually kind of isolate that even further when we went into the New World of Darkness by breaking down and thinking in terms of, hey, this is a phys these guys really mimic the uh, physical, mental, social uh, trinity of how we had organized things all along, but um, even though we had deliberately set that up during the New World of Darkness, it was kind of present all the way that uh, things didn't tend to just naturally fall into a set of three, and the first three came out, just hit um, the original uh, urbane mystery fixation with death um, of vampire which then gets an immediate opposite that led to a lot of fighting uh, with werewolf and then mage sort of balanced the uh, in some of the uh, intellectual aspects of vampire with the spiritual and emotional intuitive aspects of werewolf I, I'd say that mage and werewolf both really touched on that spirituality angle. Uh, spirit made solid, spirit made relevant, uh, philosophical issues writ large and brought front and center were both key things in that game. And if you don't think that philosophy was a part of Werewolf, you haven't read the litany. So <laughs> the 
the games were a marked contrast from Vampire, where your morality is punitive. If you fail to uphold your humane behavior, you take various punishments and penalties, and you get more corpse life. Whereas in Werewolf and in Mage, you were striving for some sort of more enlightened sensibility or some erudite understanding of the spirit world that brought rewards with it. So in a sense, there was that turnaround where Vampire was tracking your descent into madness and inhumanity that Mage and Werewolf were tracking your character's attempt to climb that pinnacle of becoming mm -hmm. a better person and following that spiritual path. Well, it also followed a shift in priority in a way because Vampire is the very quintessential horror game in that your first most important priority is you. you know, mm -hmm. What, how it may even be in a relatively selfish fashion, you know, how am I going to, uh, you know, make the people I like get ahead, but much of Vampire, the whole setting is shaped by these incredibly powerful beings going, well, I'm going to do what's best for me and walk on whoever it takes to get away, and that's where so much of the conflict from the setting begins, whereas Werewolf and Mage both start with the precepts that the most powerful people in here tend to think there's something more important than them. And, you know, that way isn't necessarily going to lead to happier times as we're starting to get into the area of religious fanatics and other people who do horrible things for in the name of something larger than themselves. But that was the first big step um, away from focusing on the small little I am the center of my universe to I am just a piece of it. Mm. I know for me, working on uh, uh, Mindset Theater Awakening, uh, a lot of the groundwork had already been laid by uh, you know, the gentleman to my left here. So to me, it was more along the lines of taking this existing material and really applying it to a live action setting. Because one thing I've seen consistently from mage players is they will spend hours and hours and hours arguing in game about metaphysical concepts. And I think it's fascinating, the fact that we have this uh, made up mythology that's it's grounded a lot in real occult ideas and concepts, but you know how we put the pieces together is uniquely our own, and people are just so fascinated by this really rich tapestry that they're willing to tear in character, kind of tear it apart and analyze it and have wild debates and kill each other's characters over reinterpretations of how the world really works, and that kind of aggressive philosophy was always really fascinating to me, and I really wanted to try to express that in Awakening and being able to sit there for nine months and just really be able to flesh out and play with those concepts was, was a great treat. So the next thing I wanted to kind of talk on is that um, they all had different audiences and, and there was a lot of people that liked Vampire but the people that liked Werewolf, the people that liked Page, they were more fanatic. I mean, <laughs> like they really I mean, there's a, there was like, and, and Werewolf was kind of the middle game, it always struck me. It was like, oh, I play Werewolf when I play the end, I play Survivor. And there's the guys like, I only play Mage. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, it, and I, I had a, a kind of a funny story, because I'll never forget, like, one of the, the first times when Werewolves could kind of, you could start playing Werewolves in, in live action games is, I'm at this convention, and, and I'm, I'm going to the bathroom, and there's six guys standing by the bathroom doing this. <laughs> And, and I go, what's, what, what's going on? The Giovanni's in the bathroom. We're going to go get him. I'm like, why don't you go get him? 